yummy. Not yummy. It'll kill you. Yummy. Everything is edible at least once. You know, you know what? We should let Dragon sip it so she can, like, perish. Okay, it is contained in a steel crate. <laughs> a okay. Ste- in a concrete also, vault. Dragon, I'm sorry I that want- I slightly suggested you should drink the death water you wanted to drink. <laughs> I crave violence. <laughs> what is what is this friends group? I don't know. We still haven't decided where we put it. <laughs> well, we were trying uh, to figure out its overall size to decide where to put it. I would say well, city. City, yeah. yeah. It could probably destroy continent if it wanted, but let's be fair. It doesn't seem all that violent. It just moves around, does what it does, and what it does is extremely violent. It would probably get to the continent danger if it was combined with a cloud. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Don't, ever, don't, no. don't no, just, just don't. <laughs> uh, what's next? Uh, SP-870, which, uh, hold on, which is also nicknamed the Maybe They're Monsters. Maybe They're Monsters. Yep. Uh, anyway, SP-870 is an animal species of undetermined proportions and appearance which for unknown reasons can only be perceived by individuals suffering from schizophrenia. This often results in specimens of SCP-870 being dismissed as hallucinations. Specimens of SCP-870 are omnivorous and seem to eat nearly all kinds of plants and meat, but will typically eat their food in secluded areas. Notably, so in other words, oh, yeah. put this where the kudzu is. <laughs> Notably, two people with the ability to perceive SP-870 will des- describe its appearance in completely different ways, even when looking at the same specimen. Of SP-870, descriptions of SP-870 have, been- have included an alligator with spider legs and three eyes, a man made out of smoke, a giant ant with a human face, a hunchbacked child with a parrot's head, a spider with too many legs, family. A giant centipede with human arms instead of legs. Would you like a bite? It tastes good. Is it still the coffee? I was no. about to say. I was about to say. Humpback child with a parrot's head. Yeah, that's just bright. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway. I was about to say that this is just my family. Bye. Anyway. Well, bright, bright's your adoptive mom, so it works. Gosh. Sh- <laughs> anyway. Well, you know, only people who are those with schizophrenia, so I don't think anyone in Penguin's family would be able to see it. <laughs> On the other hand, my brother would be able to see it, my uncle would be able to see it, my grandma would be able to see it. Anyway. I think, yeah, my great, my, my great aunt that is no longer with us would be able to see it. Anyway. Oh, it's um, an SCP, that's an animal that you can only see if you have schizophrenia. Yeah, none of us. Yeah, none of us. So, yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. Specimens of SP-870 are highly predatory and will typically stalk their prey for months and years without eating. It is unknown how they manage to last this time without succumbing to malnutrition. Eventually, at a seemingly random time, when their prey is alone or in secluded area, SP-870 will kill and swallow their prey whole. SP-870's me- method of reproduction is currently unknown. But the Journal of Schizophrenic Research or Redacted speculates that they do not require substance to survive and instead repurpose the body of their victim into their young over a large period of time. This theory has not been verified and research is underway to test it. How the fuck would you test that? <laughs> Wait, you why am I asking? Want to know. You why am I asking? Just lock it in. Know. Anyway, why am I asking? This is the foundation. They probably just lock some poor sap who has schizophrenia into a room with this thing until it ate him and then watch what happened. Yep. Anyway, 
A specimen of SCP-870 currently in Foundation's custody frequently attempts to breach containment and has been even proven hostile to all personnel. Banging noises from are, are audible from SCP-870's containment er area at all hours of the day. Research is ongoing to find a way to perceive SP-870 without being schizophrenic, but this may take a considerable length of time. It is currently believed that there could be dozens, if not hundreds, of SP-870 in the world. They are a clear and present danger to the public, and steps must be taken to destroy or contain the species. Also, uh, there's an interview. Oh. I want to hear this. This is a really creative and interesting SCP. All right. Interviewed Mr. Redacted. Interviewer, Dr. Redacted. It's Dr. Clef. <laughs> Shut is up. Is Dr. Clef schizophrenic, though? No. No. Anyway. I'm just making a joke that any time it says Dr. Redacted, my head canon is that it's actually Clef. <laughs> or Bright. Hush. Anyway. Forward on Redacted, Mr. Redacted reported in police that he killed a monster at his home in Redacted. Mr. Redacted was later found to be schizophrenic, and the Foundation, suspecting SB-870's involvement, brought him in for interrogation. Dr. Redacted. Hello, Redacted. How are you? I'm just going to say Redacted and Mr. Redacted. Mr. Redacted. I'm fine. Fine, who are you? Dr. Redacted. I am Dr. Redacted. I'm just here to verify some details what you told to the police. Mr. Redacted. Sure, I guess. Shoot. Dr. Redacted. What did this monster look like? Can you describe it for me? Mr. Redacted. Are you calling me a liar? It's true. I swear it was there. Dr. Redacted. Please ans answer the question, Mr. Redacted. Uh, Mr. Redacted. Uh, sorry, sorry. I just kind of stressed. Well, it sort of looked like a spider, but with way, way too many legs. It was just running at me and screeching, and I shot it. Mr. Redacted. That if it has more than eight legs, then it's not a spider. Yeah. Mr. Well, Redacted. Yeah. They're trying to make comparisons. Yeah. Anyway. Mr. Redacted, was this the first time you've seen the monster, Mr. Red I mean, Dr. Redacted, was this the first time you've seen the monster, Mr. Redacted? Mr. Redacted, um, uh, Dr. Redacted, I'm sorry, answer the question, please. Mr. Redacted, I'd, I'd seen them everywhere. I've been following them, seeing what they did. I need, needed to know what the, they were real, you know? Dr. Redacted. Understandable. Did you see anything important? Mr. Redacted. One of the bastards was hunting this guy. I just saw it outside his house, watching him. Me watching it, watching him. Have, have you ever dropped something, then looked on the floor, and it's gone? Dr. Redacted. Certainly. Why? Mr. Redacted. It's not just gone. This guy. I saw him. Drop a ruler, and that thing. It was under his desk, and it just snatched him and ate it whole. Then a few days later it ate him. Swallowed him whole. Oh. Dr. Redacted. Well, thank you, Mr. Redacted. Ms. Redacted will see you out. Closing statement. Mr. Redacted was dosed with a Class A amnestic and subsequently re released. Worryingly, Mr. Redacted implied that SB-870 were present in major population center. Further investigation is ongoing. Honestly, in that situation, if I was the uh, foundation, given how much effort that guy had put in, I'd want to bring him on and see if he could actually help try to find these things more frequently. Yeah, also, there's an addendum. If you want me to read it. Yeah, let's go ahead. And then addendum 870-1. I personally don't believe that the schizophrenics are really seeing SB-870 fully. They can just see it more than us. We don't see it because our brains aren't made to see it. The schizophrenics, their brains are wired up to just that tiny bit differently. And they can see it just a tiny bit more. These things have the perfect camouflage and we simply are unable to see it through. It's unable to see through it. Dr. Redacted. 
give away the sticker, Dr. Clay. <laughs> so yeah, that's the SCP. There's just a bunch of mm -hmm. monsters that are invisible. Except for schizophrenics. Yeah, certain groups. Don't summarize it as just invisible monsters. <laughs> invisible schizophrenic monsters. Oh, isn't that implies that the line for that... uh, don't starve? Isn't that literally just the game Don't Starve? Maybe. Don't know that game. Well, okay, it's I can explain it. Don't so, starve. Don't it's... starve. Pretty much, you have a sanity meter and also a hunger meter. Obviously, duh. Uh, but when your sanity goes down, you get start. You start getting attacked by shadow creatures that only you can see, and they can kill you. Um, I see. Anyway, on to where we should put this mon uh the this group of monsters. Mm. That's a tough one. Okay, as dangerous as they are to those who can't see it and can, I would say um like group because I don't see them mass hunting humans out anytime soon. Yeah, like they they're very slow hunters. Yeah. But as a side note, I find this one in particular to be so incredibly interesting as just the way it's put together. Because on one hand, it mixes in the fact that the that a part of why these things are so easily hidden is the fact that the only people who can freaking see them are people who are less likely to be taken seriously by the general public. And two, this is just like an interesting yeah. hypothetical explanation for the fact that there are times when people just seem to fucking vanish. <laughs> people just drop off the face of the earth and we don't seem to be able to find them. I would say it's a very vague term, but as vague as it is, there's only a very tiny, tiny, tiny population of schizophrenic people. Yeah. Okay. Despite the fact that I've already said that I have three schizophrenic relatives. Well, yeah, it runs in the fam. But... Yes, they have learned that, though it is very rare... It's a dominant it is, trait. It, it is, yeah, you can inherit it. My grandma passed it down to her son, and my mom, even though she didn't have it, passed it down to my brother. Because it was still in the DNA, and no. Oh. Same basic oh. reason why Bright probably shouldn't have kids, because of narcolepsy. Yes. <laughs> Except for adopted ones. Dragon yeah. will be the first one. No, because the thing is, chronic illness is already run in my family. I was saying the first one to be adopted. What the fuck were you oh. thinking? <laughs> Are you... <laughs> Child! <laughs> they would be Did... <laughs> Come out of you. Are you going to be reborn? <laughs> like in the same sense that Christians use the term? Like, is Bright the Messiah to you? What's going on? <laughs> anyway, um I don't think anyone should view Bright as their Messiah. Fair. Anyway, uh this next SCP is a very popular one. And it's, uh, I'm going to tell you its nickname, and you probably already know what it is. The Self-Replicating Cake. Oh, yeah. It's is been it, a while since can I... Can I eat it? <laughs> can, can I... Oh, Actually, I'm... yes, please do. Yes. I... Yay! Yes, please Yay! do. The Bright will go into it, but brief summary. If this cake is not constantly eaten, it will replicate so much that it will end humanity. It will cover the entire <laughs> earth in cake. Eat that cake. Please eat the cake. Please eat the cake. <laughs> <laughs> no one's actually finished eating it though. Well yeah, because it but because it's an infinite cake that if it left to its own devices will destroy us all. Expecting people to finish off the infinite cake is like expecting someone to finish off the infinite potato bag. Actually, I think there is an SCP that could finish it off. The French? The 682. Hey, Dragon, what the fuck? The French and SCP? Right? It's, I mean, Dragon, 
That's just straight up bigotry. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, what the fuck? Try again. That is not. That's not okay. <laughs> I'm French Canadian. It's okay. No. No. In the same <laughs> sense that it French doesn't. Canadian, you're Floridian. In the same sense that it wouldn't make much sense for me as a person who is primarily Irish and German to make Irish and German jokes, because so, surprise, wait. surprise, even though I technically like have ancestors that came from those places i never had to go through the potato famine i'd never had to deal with that shit yeah like that's a part of why i tend to be iffy about this being sold because you're irish yeah like i less than slaves because you were irish yeah ironic yeah like ironically enough a part of why i'm where i am now and it's a fairly good place is because a lot of Irish people who are being mistreated just headed west as uh, property started being sold off like pennies per acres. Yeah. And so, obviously that comes with the side effect of, you know, colonialism. But so, point being, I was fairly, in, like my family was fairly insulated from a lot of that because we literally just noped the fuck out. Anyway, so... Do we really need to talk? Because that's we already all know what it is and knows it can end humanity if it's not eaten. I, I, I would like to hear it again to okay. refresh my memory on all the specifics. Alright. And that is true, but also everyone who's watching this stream might not know what it is, even if all of us know. That's fair. Anyway, yeah. on to the SCP. Uh, and S- obviously the child didn't know about it. Right. I forgot about the I, I heard cake and I want to eat it. Anyway, Good. Eat it. Anyway, continue. I have S- a bird brain. SCP 871 is a collection of 237 right. cakes. Instances of SCP 871 may vary widely in appearance and size, covering the entire range of foods described by humans as cake. A smallest observed instance of SCP 871 is a miniature cupcake with a mass of 15 grams. The largest yet observed is a 22 kilogram uh, bong kuchen measuring 2 meters in length. When any instance cake, of... Fucking cake. Yeah. That, that cake is almost as long as I am. <laughs> and I'm 6'3". <laughs> any, when any instance of S871 is consumed by a human or a collection of humans, it is replaced approximately 24 hours afterward with a similar cake. This cake will appear on a flat surface in the vicinity of the location where the previous instance was eaten. If any of these cakes is subsequently damaged through to any means other than being eaten by a human, including being eaten by a non-human animal, it will be replaced instantaneously. Instance recreated in this manner contain the schedule of the original instance, the mechanism by which instances of 871 are replaced is currently unknown. Individual recurrences of 871 have been observed to mutate over time, varying in minor characteristics between each instance, with larger changes occurring in roughly 5% of replacements. No deleterious effects have been observed to result from the consumption of 871, even in cases where several instances have been consumed, accepting those acceptable from eating large amounts of cake. 871's danger originates in the consequences of instance not being eaten. Any instance of of 871 which is not consumed will cause a new cake to be created in its vicinity after 24 hours. While it is similar to its normal replacement behavior, the original instance will continue to exhibit the same properties, replicating if damaged and continuing to replace itself every 24 hours. This behavior has been observed in all cases where more than 10% of the mass of an instance remain unconsumed, as there is no more mechanism for halting 871's replication. Any uncontained instances could replicate exponentially quickly, becoming unmanageable. No maintainable plans for containment of more than 20,000 instances of 871 have yet been devised. It's estimated that an uncontrolled outbreak originating with a single instance would render the Earth uninhabitable within 80 days. 
we would die by cake. Yummy. Talking about food-related snacks. Yummy. I think this is a lesson in the potato bag. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, no, no. The, the bag of infinite potatoes literally has inside it a dimension that was murdered via potatoes. Talking about food-related deaths, look what I put in dump posts. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, but yeah, if we were careful with the cakes, we could die, and we could become someone's bag of infinite cake. How would, how would you get a bag of cake? <laughs> It'd be a real mushy bag. <laughs> a cake. Some cakes don't have frosting. Some cakes are all mush. Some cakes are not mush. <laughs> So where should we put this SCP? Already in my tried house. to make cereal, but it burst what into flame. Box of cake rather than an infinite bag. I think the funniest thing about the cereal death is the fact that you don't cook cereal. You get it out of the fridge. It is literally impossible in wait, The Sims 4 wait. to die making cereal. Why would you put cereal in the fridge? You pull, okay, in the Sims 4, you pull, you can have your Sims eat, like, cereal from the fridge. It's a quick meal. Uh, and Why they pull is it, out it in the fridge? fridge? The, the context is in, in, uh, dump post. But well, also, yeah, the fact that all my Sims did it. burst into flames. Did they leave, uh, did they leave the heater on too long? No, they burst into flames making the cereal. Oh, yeah. But it is Hear that the Sims keep cereal in the fridge. You can't make them not do that, but that does still hurt my brain a little. Yeah. <laughs> Besides the whole bursting into fire trying to make cereal, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're all very do they're all very stupid. Anyway, on to anyway, the SAP. This anyway, this is a very easy XK. Obviously, mm -hmm. eighty days of infinite cake. Not properly being disposed of equals worse than the results of climate change. <laughs> I guess you just send cakes to everyone you know, everyone you don't know. I'll, everyone eats a cake. They but they, cake. but they have to be sure, like like they have to eat like one hundred percent of it. Which yeah. I don't, I don't know about you, but anytime my mom makes a fucking cake. That shit sits in the fridge for days. Yeah. Because we only have three people. Party, then you'll be guaranteed unpercentage. Okay, true, time. yeah. You just have to visit all the kids' birthdays. That's if the kids don't just decide to throw the cake. Oh, that would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bring it to a teenager's party. Uh, and and tell them that this is definitely a marijuana cake, and they will have fun with it. And then the placebo effect will take them into the stars. Yeah. I live in Colorado, so this isn't illegal for me to say. Also, apparently this next SCP uh, used to be Euclid, but changed to Keter. Oh, okay. At least it wasn't changed from Euclid, uh, to Keter to Euclid. <laughs> yeah, that would, that's definitely not happened during this whole project. <laughs> no, not at all. Especially ones that have, there are none that have died during this project either. <laughs> no. And there's definitely not any Keters that just shouldn't be Keters because they're defeated by the fucking 20 watt light bulb. <laughs> Sorry. But, I couldn't even hear what you said. It was Sorry. Just... I You're remember talking the about the German party robot. I remembered the German party robot. Uh, anyway, we, it's it's a robot that's dangerous if it's in if it's not light, like if it's in the dark, it's dangerous because it's a killer robot, and they dressed it up like a German party guy, but it just shuts off in a in with when it's in light above a 20 watt bulb and yet they call it keter 
because apparently the SCP Foundation doesn't have the money to go down to fucking Ace Hardware and get a 20-watt fucking bulb. Ace, Ace Hardwares aren't everywhere. Okay, go down to their local fucking hardware store. They have the funds. Why? Why is this a Keter? They just because need a fucking knows, floodgate. Everyone knows the funding that the SCP Foundation is actually just... Like it's literally just fish sticks. They get they get paid in fish sticks by the U.S. government. No, no, they get paid by all governments. Dragon. They, they, yeah, one I'm talking specifically about the U.S. government. They get paid in fish sticks. No, they get paid actual money. Yeah, and they actually, and sometimes actual money. sometimes they even control the U.S. government. Yeah. I like my idea better. <laughs> Anyway, point being, these people have the fucking money to go down and get a floodlight. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, next SCP. Hell, you could probably put the damn thing in front of your laptop and it'd be shut off. <laughs> Show it every Markiplier. Eleven. Uh, anyway, we on... Maybe. Okay. Anyway, uh... Sorry, what? What was said? Seeing if we could add SCP-511 and uh, Bright said maybe, and they were going to talk about the current SCP world. Oh, okay. Wait, SCP-511, did we already do that one? No. That's the basement cat. There's Is it basement Keter? Cat? Yeah, it's uh, Euclid, not Keter. Uh, I don't know about the that's probably why we didn't talk about it, because it was Euclid. Yeah, because... This is the Keter class. I could so. talk about it after I do 902, because that's last, not the last one I was going to do, but that was, I said, I always set up like 10 pages. And then I start searching the number again. Oh. So yeah, after SV 902, I can pull 511 up, and we can talk about that. We're, we're not going to add it to the list, because it's not Keter. We could put it in spood tier. Yeah, but I'll have to get a picture, too. And then go through the process of adding it in, then saving it, then re-putting it in. Yeah. CP511, I can grab a picture. Okay. Well, I guess we can put it in. That's fine. Listen, Bright. You have to have the will to be more proficient than the internationally funded organization that can't fucking get a goddamn floodlight. <laughs> anyway, on to this. I, I hate this thing so goddamn much. It's fucking <laughs> red free in my head. And you saw I it multiple it. times in Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> is this... Is this torture? Yes. Are you... Why would you do that to them? Anyway. <laughs> On to the SCP. SCP-877 is a set of 12 microchips acquired between 1990 redacted and 2020 uh, redacted from the several courses of different small mammals. Animals found to contain copies of 877 include, but not are, but are not limited to, Scurus carolinus. Linus, or the Eastern Gray Squirrel, Felis Cantus, the Domestic Cat, the and Umops Perotis, the Western Massive Bat. The microchips are marked except for small stamps, readable only by electron microscope that read Alexfa University Biolog Biology Department followed by generation and a number. However, no records exist of an institution named Alexeyeva University. Moreover, the abilities of these microchips have are beyond the the technological capability of any known laboratory to create. Copies of SCP-877 have a potential processing speed of 3.3 times 10 to redacted power a uh, million in, uh, instructions per second at redacted 
terahertz and storage ca capability estimated at redacted petabytes. The chips are capable of interfacing with and controlling the motor functions of host creatures, though they will usually allow the mammal's instincts to carry out routine affairs. SCP-877 has primarily been noted to take over its host for the purpose of propagating itself. The mechanism by which this takes place is unknown, but the behavior associated is well documented. A host animal will approach another animal and immobilize it by the most expedient means available to, to it. The host will bite the creature somewhat on the head, making blood contract between the mammals. The original host will release the animal after 10 minutes. Within 24 hours, a new copy of SP-877 will emerge in the new host. The chip will be slightly smaller, and the generation number will have, will have advanced by one. And each chip appears to be capable of propagating itself six times, implying that the total population of SP-877 may be in the tens of millions. I didn't space out with. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Jerry? No. Oh. Why do my friends hate me? Are you <laughs> the only thing I did was sneeze. How dare you sneeze? How dare you have a bodily function that is completely normal? Bad. Go to your room. Basically, it's a microchip that takes over the minds of animals it's put on. Does it work on humans? Uh, I don't think the Foundation has tested that. That's something the Foundation normally would have tested by now. Oh, apparently... They just kept, they just kept making people wear the 3D glasses over and over again. Why wouldn't they <laughs> test this? Okay, so this... This thing actually probably hates humans because, um, at September 2011, another attack involving SCP-877 reported. Two Boston Terriers, four squirrels, and a garter snake cooperated in attacking an 11-year-old child. Holy what? shit! <laughs> is, is this the Penguin origin story? I don't think this is my origin story. No, that's the- there's a game. Okay, so effectively, it can just take control of animals, and it makes the animals want to harm people. Was I one see. of the animals that tried to attack, uh, was- was a pit bull? No, Boston Terrier. Oh. Boston Terrier. No, they got Ducky! My yeah. dog! It's How two Boston they? Terriers, no, four squirrels, and a garter snake. Because if it was a pit bull, I was like, oh, that's kind of unusual. Boston Terriers are basically very tiny pit bulls. Oh. Not at all, actually. But now remind but... me of food. So... It four foods, using it to attack a child along with a dog and snake. See, the thing oh. is, it's... Uh, and also the microchips can pro... Uh, uh, reproduce by the animal biting the head of another animal because for 10 minutes. Can reproduce at this point. Yeah. Okay, so. It's through sharing it, blood, though, at the head. Okay, so. This is almost a non threat unless it reaches Africa. Yeah. Once it reaches Africa or any place with large. Carnivorous or Australia. Dangerous okay, yeah, Australia. <laughs> that's also yeah, Australia. <laughs> kangaroo, like even without like the mambas and the Sydney funnel webs, they got kangaroos, and those things can just fucking murder people easy. What about that Goliath bird eater spider? Those things are wanna... gigantic, and watching them well go on after people. <laughs> you want to know a fun fact about kangaroos? What? Some sure. kangaroos will actively hunt down people, like walking down, uh, walking their dogs and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, can't, can't... kangaroos are already vicious enough. Like they are bloodthirsty animals. 
but I was like, oh, I'm the vegetarian. So it's, yeah, it's like, yeah. But yeah, they're also, and... like, beating the living fuck out of anything and everything that moves. Yeah, and you see, the hippo's also vegetarian, but it can kill a crocodile with ease. <laughs> and a person. Well, obviously it's easier to kill a fucking person than a crocodile. We don't have <laughs> we don't have the inborn stinking scale armor. We just got this this fleshy bullshit without much hair. Anyway, if we get caught by a fucking hippopotamus, we're done for. We're dead. Game so over. Restart. Basically, only in like certain areas, this SP could be dangerous. Yeah, like I I think it could also feasibly be pretty damn dangerous if, for instance, uh, it took up a presence in, like, the little dumbass suburbs that have been popping up that have t problems with bears. Black bears are mm. already a menace enough when it comes to people. Like, like while, while they're awesome, and I love bears, they're also dangerous as hell because bear, bears and... Bears aren't as dangerous as people imagine them to be. I mean, they, they're they aren't. But, yeah, but like, they, they aren't as dangerous as they're imagined to be. Yeah, like there was one, uh, I remember new, one news article where uh, there was a bear that wasn't hurting anyone. It was just near someone's uh, farm area, but it was killed because they didn't want it to get the taste of their grapes. Their grapes. Yeah, that's how the last uh, California black bear died. For fuck's sake. We don't want these large, you huggable animals. You ever want to know animals. why California State Bear is extinct? That's why. Great. Because some guy, because because some jackass piece of shit farmer was scared of a bear eating his grapes. Thank you, capitalism. Yeah. Well, anyway, where do you think we should place this stuff? This is kind of difficult to place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I. I... <laughs> No, it's it's dangerous. It can still kill people, so it's not appropriate. It's well, a dear. continent because honestly, it's easy to spread, and it can control things really well to a scary degree. I was going well, to that's... say, I was going to say that we do have some dangerous, like, I think. If I remember correctly, we have some dangerous things in Spirits here already, so. Yeah. Well, that's, but besides that, I don't think Continent would be very appropriate, because either A, this would have to be like the microchips infect an entire continent's worth of animals without doing any attacks in between, and then just suddenly rush at them, which I feel like the SCP Foundation would be pretty on top of picking up on. Look. And and B, when still, like, when we get right down to it, like, there can be a lot of danger with these animals causing harm to people and property. But this is America. <laughs> yeah. every, every two people, every two people has a gun. I don't like, have a gun. Well, what about this? What if the chips get in the south where the giant boars are? Then, what if it infects an entire herd of boars so strong they can literally take down jeeps? That's a problem. Yeah, why aren't we worried about moose? Listen, what about moose? or or what about the anacondas in Florida? Listen, we have oh. anacondas down here. Yeah, you uh, didn't know that. What? They're the most well known. <laughs> Wait, no, you're not thinking anacondas. You're thinking uh. Oh, no, they're thinking anacondas. They got out. People... Are they they out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've uh, dumped out like, anacondas in, in Florida. It's a problem. Yeah. Both anacondas they're and they're pythons. They're bigger in Florida than they did in their native habitat. Yeah. Actually, another fun fact about Florida. Uh, in the Silver Springs, there is, like, a horde of monkeys that have rabies. If I remember correctly. I actually... I know there's a horde of monkeys. I forget if they have rabies in or not. Florida? What is Florida? Are you oh, referring no. to the locals? <laughs> Are you referring to the locals? <laughs> yes, Sorry, I, I am had from Florida, and everything that comes out of my mouth melts your brain. We are all eldritch abominations. <laughs> okay, and we're going to bite your shins. Put that aside. Ultimately, 
granted, yes, it would be a serious threat if these things took control of a bunch of boars, or the anacondas, or all of these. But still, guns, with a properly funded effort against them, they're, they're dead. Not to mention, we're still talking about the South. Like, how many people down there just actually own 50 cows? Fair. <laughs> like, like, I don't care how OP you are as a boar. If you get point blanked with a Barrett 50 cow, you're not getting back up. Anyway, I would say at worst, city. In the worst case scenario, if like the if the chips coordinated and planned a targeted assault, then city. Yeah. But I don't think it would get beyond that because guns. That's fair. I mean, if it was Australia, Australia would be fucked. Well, they didn't have okay, actually. They didn't Australia. have also, also. Wouldn't they also try and bring in like fucking the air force or some shit? Oh, yeah, Australia has air. an air force. Like a part, like literally. Yes, they did. <laughs> uh, besides, like you gotta keep in mind, a part of why Australia lost their emu wars is partially because it was something that it was almost completely non-funded by the government in terms of like the actual military getting involved. Like they had some funding and they got in some pretty powerful weaponry. I'm the mo main reason it wasn't funded is because the military basically belittled the idea of them becoming a big issue. Exactly. Then like, when they did throw the money in that was needed, they threw the green people in, not the people with prior experience that was waiting for guns to use on them. So it's like... Ever? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, that's another reason they lost the Emu War, because when they did throw money in it, they used the inexperienced people instead of the experienced people on the farms waiting to use the guns. Yeah, what, what this is to say is that the reason the Australian government lost the Great Emu War is because of bureaucracy, literally. Never trust okay, Big fair. Bird or his cousins. Like, if, if they had actually engaged in a more reasonable sense of doing this, as as abhorrent as it would be, they could have won their emu war. I don't like it because it's just randomly killing off animals that live there naturally. But yeah, uh, still, the issue wasn't like, uh, that they were living there naturally; is that they became high in abundance and they were right, yeah. all the crops, and they were literally going to starve all of Australia. Oh, okay, yeah, I did not know that piece of context. Yeah. Anyway. Those they were eating were very important. Uh, I'm back, D-Class, and we can go to the next SCP, which is a joke SCP. Yay! It's like me! Yay. Joke! Okay, yay! Is it gonna be in Spood tier, or is it gonna end fucking reality? Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> also, also, I'm gonna have to read everything in it, because it, it's the entirety of it is just a fucking joke. Is it the B-movie script? No. Is it the entirety of the B-movie script? No. You like, you like jazz? Anyway, shut up. I can't believe that that woman wanted to fuck a bee. Shut up, dragon. Not no, don't movie. don't say that. You're a child. <laughs> he wanted to romance a bee. Yes. Anyway, on with the SCP. This Plus is... that action would probably kill the bee. Yeah. Anyway, th so it would count as homicide. Be <laughs> aside. Anyway, on with the SCP. No. This, this is the very model of an SCP 900 J. Its object class is Keter, so we'd rather that you stay away. So, follow to the letter these procedures for its keeping in. A cell at Site 11's what this creature should be sleeping in. The walls are sealed uh, hermetically. With seven layers steel doors each, and anyone who says its name will fill their head and veins with bleach. Oh. <laughs> Description. Sorry, is this just a, is this just an SCP poem? 
Maybe. <laughs> Description of SCP-900-SJ is delicate to say the least. To put it most politely, it's a putrid planet-eating beast. Its surname is Cognito Hazard. First initial W. In short, a hostile monster that can class a day with X and K. Let's lock it up and let it rot, this SCP-900-J. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We need to stop the presses. I want you to send this to me. I need to read this. <laughs> I'll send you the entire thing if you want to. Yes, send me the whole last thing. I will read this SCP. I love reading poetry, and this is just goddamn amazing. You didn't expect an SCP article to be a poem? <laughs> This is, yeah, I did not expect that. This is great. Is okay, so you just copy and pasted it here, okay. Is the entirety of it. Penguins? No. No. Okay. <clears throat> this is the very model of an SCP-900-J. Its object class is Keter, so we'd rather you stay away. So follow to the letter these procedures for its keeping in. A cell at Site Eleven's what's this creature should be sleeping in. The walls are sealed hermetically, with seven layered steel doors each. And anyone who says its name, well, th okay, well, fill their head and veins with bleach. Description of 900-J is delicate, to say the least. To put it most politely, it's a putrid planet-eating beast. Its, surma its surname's a cognito hazard, first initial W. Just say 900-J so that its name can never trouble you. In short, a hostile monster that can class that can class a day with X and K. Let's lock it up and let it rot. This is SCP nine hundred dash J. Can you reread the first two lines? Because I want to throw in a word. Because I thought that was real. okay. Okay, this is the very model of an SCP nine hundred dash J. It's Object class is Keter, so we'd rather you'd stay away. Those are the first two lines. What was one of the lines rhymed with gay, and I wanted to throw in gay, but I didn't want to be. In... I don't. I didn't want to interrupt. Away. <laughs> Which line was it? Maybe line three. This, this object class is Keter, so we'd rather you stay gay. <laughs> stay <Yeah>. gay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. I don't think that's very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Because women are very pretty. True. Anyway, anyway, on with the SCP. Uh, there, there are two more paragraphs after this. This nasty beast was captured and discovered in a slaughterhouse. Reports arose of disturbances of foreman's Stanlau. Stanlau? Stan what is that name? <laughs> I don't are know. Stanislaus. Are you? Stanislaus. It's a weird foreign name that I've never seen before, okay? And all of his subordinates in ways no one could understand, with possible involvement of an agent from the serpent's hand. Should SCP 900 J escape in a containment breach, the world would be blown into bits from London to Daytona Beach. It has no good intentions. It thinks of mankind as lunch. It even called my mom a piece of data I will not expunge. I mean, now expunge. I will now... Oh, okay, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. This is hard to read, but it's incredibly fun to do so. Yeah. Can you do it in a British accent? No. No. Oh. To keep this... Can't we go all psycho-British? They're already doing a good enough job. Yes. 
Keep going, Hatchet. Keep... I believe in you. To keep this beastie in a box is in itself impossible. This is yeah, it's too hard to do the British. I that wasn't even British. That was just weird. Anyway, to keep this beastie in a box, it is in a box is in itself impossible. Though hell if we won't try, cause we're the ones you hold responsible. Wanna I wanna I wanna take a moment to hold on that. We're gonna try, cause we're the ones who are responsible. <laughs> Not responsible enough to get a fucking twenty watt bulb. <laughs> are you... <laughs> okay. okay. What if I told you I ate all of the floodlights in existence? Then I'd think I was talking to a ghost. <laughs> anyway. I think we were talking to a goat. A goat? <laughs> what if it's a goat ghost? That's ghost. your perfect. <laughs> a goat incendiary ghost. Anyway, the keepers of the goat ghost. Go. Ah, goat ghost. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> we just trying to create tongue twisters now. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I say is a tongue twister because it leaves you baffled. <laughs> anyway, Hatchet, keep going. Oh, you know what? I can't argue with that. Anyway, I'm just going to re reread that just for the hell of it. To keep this beastie in a box is in itself impossible. Though hell if we won't try, because we're the ones you hold responsible. The keepers of the human race, foundations here to save the day, and we're running out of Thamiels. Two miles. Can some through miles can someone kill 900 dash j i mean i'm not going to give you trouble for pronouncing it i've heard multiple different pronunciations for that class <laughs> yeah it it's it's a very strange word yeah <laughs> addendum from the 5th of may it's gone we don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, just that one statement killed me. Okay. <laughs> Addendum from the 5th of May. It's gone. We don't know where it went. It vaporized MTF Delta 10 and told it to get bent. <laughs> 231 is missing to the Scarlet... To the... 231 is missing to the Scarlet King is furious. 682 was terrified, but 999 is curious. I hoped I'd never see the day that this would trickle out of my lips. 900-J intends to start a revolution of the scripts. Skips. The over... Of the skips? I mean, there's no R. I'm just... Oh, I'm assuming skips. Oh, yeah, it's... It is it is skips, but what the fuck is the skips? <laughs> okay. Is it like maybe it's maybe it's like a pet name for SCPs? Maybe. Start a revolution of the skips. That would make sense. The overseer councils saying prayers and going underground, and called scenario Alpha K. The planet's gone to torture town. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll read that again. The overseer councils saying prayers and going underground and called scenario Alpha K the planet's gone to torture town. <laughs> Humanity. I, I know what you said, but it's still. What the fuck? <laughs> Humanity's survival isn't looking very plausible. So light up a 420J and pray for the impossible. Or take some hard amnestics, just enough of them to make you say you ne never heard of anything called SCP-900J. I think this is one of Hatchet's new favorite SCPs. <laughs> the, I, I very much appreciate this. Uh, this is an easy spood tier in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Well, you just food here and also XK, but <laughs> just in well, case you want to read it again, ever 
I gave you also the site where it's from, so you can find Thank the you. author as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. <laughs> oh, it may be XK, but it's also a joke. XK. I know. So it, but it deserves spoon tier. Does does Jerry agree? Yeah. yeah this spoon Jerry is all. Jerry is always the final word on whether or not something goes into spoon tier. I am. <laughs> Well, you are now. Yeah, you well, you are now. <laughs> You're the closest one to Spood, therefore you would have the greatest level of knowledge on to whether or not something should be or should not be in Spood tier. When I first got the oh, side pulled up, I didn't I even read. I'm closest to them, but they're saying Spood does what they're trying that I don't, but okay. When I first well, pulled the site up for this number, I didn't realize it was a poem. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's fair, Jerry, but I mean, like, within this group right now. That's also fair. I was not asking you to do those sorts of things with your sibling. That's no. Rude. I would not do that. Let's continue on. Anyway. I was making this weird. I was making a different kind of joke, but you made it weird. Anyway, uh, the next NCP is also a very popular one. Wait, Which it, with its nickname. Okay, maybe I just, I I think I might have just misunderstood something and then accidentally made it weird yeah. without meaning to. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Anyway, this next SCP is also a very popular one that many people know about, and its nickname is the Ticking Box. Don't know if I know this one. Well, it is one of the popular ones. The popular ones are always over 1,500. And this is 1,589. <laughs> Not 1,569? I'm going to stop. Patrick, shut up. <laughs> it's a short description, so hopefully you'll understand what it is. Uh, yeah. After it. Anyway, SCP-902 is a box roughly the size of an adult human head. And it measures 30 centimeters by 15 centimeters by... 19 centimeters. It appears to be an ammunition box of a type used roughly 30 years ago, despite this item having been in Foundation custody for roughly 16, 60 years. SCP-902 is made of lead. The composition of this item inside SCP-902 is unknown. SCP-902 emits what has been described as a ticking sound, and anyone who hears a sound becomes convinced that they're that the item is counting down. Oh yeah, now I remember this one. When opened, the box appears empty. However, the ticking remains. The object continues counting down. Anyone who becomes aware of SV-902, whether through personal interaction or by reading this report, becomes convinced that whatever is in, so is in the box is horribly dangerous and needs to be destroyed as soon as it finishes counting down, and not before. Staff exposed to SB-902 will typically continue to attempt to open and then close the box, trying to find the object inside. There is no object. There is an object. It has to be destroyed when the countdown stops. We are, we are doing great work. We have to be stopped. And that's SCP-902. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. Because I have absolutely no way to say how dangerous this thing is. I mean, it fucks you over mentally. <laughs> yeah, but existing does that too. So it's I mean, special. Anyone within your server has to deal with that. Hey. Am I wrong? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is... Uh, I... Yeah, no. I have absolutely no idea where we should put this. It's, it's, it's a box that if you become aware of it, you are convinced that something super dangerous about it, even though there is no actual outward sign of such a thing. Though, it 
Like no, it's, it's... Wait, if they introduced it to Dr. Cliff, it would become neutralized. In yes. some way. Wait, what does that mean? Neutralized. Dr. Yeah, Clef no, would... I don't know. What would Clef do to him? Well, Probably. that's the thing. Like, like <laughs> the per anyone who does this becomes convinced that it needs to be destroyed when it stops ticking. So Clef would probably wait until it stopped ticking. And then just attach C4 to it and ignite. Yeah, fair. Actually, he would probably put the C4 on it and then just wait for the ticking to stop. But anyway, point being, considering the fact that it's been in the Foundation's custody for 60 years and has done literally nothing except take up the time of random researchers who are super convinced it's dangerous for no reason <laughs> at all. <laughs> Uh, I say reassign. <laughs> yeah. Like, with everything else on this list, <laughs> when it's taking up time and is put in a higher category, it's because there is blatant information that implies that it could or has caused harm to people. This is just a fucking box that's ticking. I just remembered that I'm muted. I'm going to point oh, no. out. They wasted all that time because they thought it was dangerous because of the box's uh, effects on the, their head. Yeah, like the like the mimetic. Yeah, like like you can't blame them for doing it's this. Dangerous. It's, it, it, it's it's as dangerous as a pillow, unless you count the frustration a danger. Yeah. Of course, there is also the possibility that it's some kind of invisible death ray nuke thingamajig that will actually destroy us. Oh. But we have no evidence for that. <laughs> and ju and just just as just as we've talked about earlier with uh with 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 uh ancient aliens, it doesn't do us much good to just talk about things that might possibly have been the case when yeah. we could just not jump to a conclusion at all until so we have proper aliens, information. They tend to ignore a lot of previous uh, data. Yeah. Well, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, I guess now a new SCP-511. As promised. I don't need a picture, though. So the basement cat, as it was called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this a was this an SCP that was made based upon the meme? Maybe. Basement kit. <laughs> anyway, are everyone ready to learn about oh, the basement be cat? Uh, before you start, I've been meaning to ask: Have you already done? <laughs> have you already done uh SCP uh three four five six? We're in the 800s, so no. <laughs> oh, we're going by... What? What's we're wrong We're going with my up brain? by number. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> we're getting close. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, excuse myself. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Wait, what should, happened? Should we grab catch it and bring them back? Oh, never mind. What happened? <laughs> when that just said goodbye to and goodbye, and I was thinking of grabbing them, but they came back. <laughs> that was hilarious, though. <laughs> like a dino boomerang. What? Nothing. <laughs> anyway, on with the, uh, the SCP Drew wants me to read. Anyway, I just broke my femur. So, what? Gosh. Congratulations. I'm playing Skate 3. <laughs> oh. Anyway, instances of SCP-511 typically occur within residential structures with a block or stone foundation that includes a basement or crawl space. All attempts to remove an instance of SCP-511 from such residents have proved ineffective. SCP-511 is always found associated with a colony of feral uh, Felis domesticus, common domestic cats. 
Members of this colony are designated SCP-511-1. SCP-511 is a mass of biological matter taking the form of a large feline, often with extra limbs, eyes, mouth, or other organs. It is typically coated with dirt, blood, and fecal matter, making its fur appear black despite its actual coloring. SCP-511's mass varies from 10 kilograms to over 50 kilograms, roughly in proportion to the number of SCP-511-1 in the associated colony. The tissue that makes up this mass consists primarily of the bodies of deceased SCP-511-1. The portion of SCP-511 that does not comprise of SCP-511-1 consists of other biomass, small rodents, various plant materials, insects and insect larvae, black mold, a human dead expunged. Incorporation of dead tissue into SP-511 does not appear to slow the normal process of decay. Different areas of SP-511 undergo different stages of biodegradation at any given time. Some areas show little more than lividity, while other areas Areas may show active carrion insect infestation, and some areas may even show uh, liquefaction of tissues. SCP-511 refers to inhabited, inhabit dark spaces with a r relatively high humidity, such as oil ba old basements and crawl spaces. It will continually scavenge its immediate area for new biomass to incorporate its into itself, displacing and expelling matter that has decayed past mechanical usefulness. Examples of SP-511-1 resemble ordinary Felis domesticus that have undergone extreme neglect, may display a body condition a score of 2 or 1 regardless of the amount of food available, Ulcerated skin is uncommon, as are parasitic infestations, tumors, and various viral and bacterial infections. A typical SV511-1 shows no interest in grooming itself and has patchy and matted fur. It is unclear to what extent the physical condition of SV511-1 is a result of the influence of SV511 and to what extent it is due to subatominal living conditions. Several you mean suboptimal? Yeah, suboptimal living conditions. Okay. Yeah. Several observations have been made of an SP511-1, retrieving biomass from elsewhere and bringing it to SP511 to be incorporated. There you go, Jerry. Why don't you read some of the side notes? All right. And you said this was Euclid? Yeah, this is Euclid. Yeah. Okay. So either way, it's going in reassign. Or, yeah. or spood tier, if you want to put the... Yeah, spood constantly, tier. It's a constantly growing a ball of decaying flesh with cats around it. Well, technically, it's not a ball of decaying flesh. It's a ball of... It's basically a giant cat. That it refuses to leave a house mm -hmm. and hate them. But anyway, read the thing. Yeah, oh, I'll okay. I'll have to remind myself too. Uh, well, technically, when I'm editing, I'll I'll see it, but uh, I have to uh, remember to move, put the picture in to the tier list. So I'll have to do it while streaming. <laughs>